So we're talking about this idea of congruent parts, congruent shapes, and congruent triangles. So a triangle has six parts, so we want to know what's the minimum number of parts we have to measure so all six parts will be the same. We've looked at one part, we've looked at two parts, three parts. Now we're looking at knowing two angles and a side. So we know two angles and a side of the triangle. And this, there are two ways to do that. The first way we're going to deal with is angle, side, angle. We know the left corner, the base, and the right corner. So here's one triangle I made with angle, side, angle. And obviously we know the third angle because 60 plus 40 is 100. And that's got to be 80, right? Because you know, if you know two angles in a triangle, you know the third one because they all have to add up to 180. Okay, just remember. So I'm going to make another one. I know I put it over here on you know, the 60 degree angle, the 4.7 base. Again, we can change that base if we want. And I need to draw my rays for my angles. Let's see, A2 goes through B, right? Yep. And B2 goes through A prime. Boom. So I got my 60 degree angle here. I got my 40 degree angle here. Um, I actually want those to be like that. Oh, don't put another ray there. That's not what you wanted. I want to make this dash. So it's just, it's just there so I can see it. All right, so now I need to find the intersection of those two rays because that's where the, you know, the corner's got to be. And make my segments, finish my triangle. So what do you think? Same triangle, not same triangle? We'll measure just to prove it, verify. 4.13 and 3.07. So, you know, if you know an angle, the side next to it, and the angle next to that, angle, side, angle, that is enough to make the whole triangle exactly the same, congruent. So that's ASA. Now let's look, look at the other way to have two angles and a side. Now we call it side, angle, angle. Side, angle, angle. Or if you want to go the other way around, you know, clockwise, counterclockwise thing, it's angle, angle, side. Um, so let's put that down. Side, angle, angle. Awesome. So we got a 6.2, we got a 40, we got an 80. Well, these triangles have to go from B to D to A. B1 to D1 to A1. And A and A1 have to show up on this line. So let's make them and see. Well, we got to go from B to D. Pretty obvious. B to D and A to D, and A to D. You know, well, right now that, you know, if I'm not on that angle, oh, come on, turn for me. It'll slide out. Okay, there we go. Boom. There it is. Are you going to turn? No, you're not going to turn, are you? So I'm going to slide my D so that my angle lines up. Now, lining things up isn't the best way to uh, be able to look at it because it might not be perfectly exact. But, you know, hey, if this is a 40 and an 80, which we know that's also a 60, right? Because all three angles have to add up to. Oh, you don't believe me? Okay. All right, so this is B to A. Yeah, 59.66. And why is it not exactly 60? Because I'm not perfect at lining these things up. It's tough to line these things up perfectly. Come on, kick back out. I was trying to line them up exactly perfectly. And that's the tough part, but I mean, that's... And this is really going to be 4.05, and this is going to be 4.05. So pretty much if I know two angles and a side, whether it's side angle angle or it's angle side angle, that's enough information to make congruent triangles. Don't have to me don't have to measure the other three parts to to make it. I can measure the other three to verify it, 
So I don't have to measure and make it. So I can just, hey, if I know 6.2 of 40 and 80, I'm good. If I know I got 60 degrees of 4.7 and 40 in between it, you know, the 4.7 in between it, that's all I need. And my other parts are going to be exactly the same. That's congruent triangles.